<laughs> JK, I got it. Oh. We're good. Got it. Okay. Now I'm going to start. So this is just supposed to be um, a talk so that gameplay engineers can get some of the high level of concepts on networking in Unreal. Um, because it's not sustainable to have like your lead engineer try to network everything that you guys produce. Um, it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. And as gameplay engineers, you really need to be thinking about the networking aspects at all times when you're designing features because you'll start heating up bandwidth really fast if you're not careful. Um, so Unreal is a server authoritative model. Uh, it has no concept of peer-to-peer or like client-to-client -client connections. Um, so the basic flow is the client wants to do something, they send some kind of action to the server, the server simulates it and sends the result back to the client. Um, no peer-to-peer -peer connections, I've talked about that. Uh, server owns basically all objects. To, if you want something to appear in everyone's game, it has to be spawned on the server. Um, by default, Unreal ships with the concept of a listen server, so one of the one of the clients is a host. Um, it's like kind of back in the old days when you played like Warcraft 3 or something, someone hosted the game, everyone connected to them, they were both a client and a server. Um, most games in AGP probably want dedicated servers. Um, a dedicated server, you need to build the engine from source to get that to work. Um, so I recommend you set up some kind of, kind of build server, um, and like pull from Epic's repository and build the engine from source and do all your dedicated server builds on that because you don't want to have to update that to everybody on your team um, whenever Unreal pushes uh, a new build um, because building from source takes like 45 minutes. Um, there's built-in client-side prediction for movement. It looks smooth, it's cool. Anything you add yourselves won't be handled. Uh, even things like if you want your character to dash, things like that, it doesn't handle that very well, so you'll have to come up with your own solution, like dashing the character on the client and also telling the server to dash and hoping that they end up basically the same place where it's going to snap, um, things like that. So one of the biggest flows that you're going to deal with um, is switching on whether or not actor has a role authority or not. Um, so there's this thing called enet role. Uh, every actor has a property called role. Um, a lot of your functions are going to switch probably on this. If you're less than role authority, you're generally a client. Um, if that's the case, you want to do client-only things, you can't do anything related to simulating um, physics or doing any game actions there because they won't be replicated to everyone else. Um, if you are role authority, Usually, you're the server. Uh, I say usually because if you're very careful, um, there is a concept of ownership in Unreal. So even if you spawn an object on the server, it's possible that you can give ownership to a client, meaning that that client will now return the role equals moral authority is true. Um, that's something you generally won't do, but if you're getting weird issues where you feel like this should be returning true but isn't, um, it may be that it's an object that has ownership set to the wrong person. Um, but in general, what this means is just who owns this actor. Like, do you are you authoritative over the actor? Um, and I just pasted the the you know, the Unreal defines there. Um, I recommend you look it up. They have some documentation. Unreal's documentation is pretty bad. Uh, so as we'll say later, like probably many times, Google is your friend. Many people have solved the problem you probably have uh, on Stack Overflow. Um, the next one is a little more kind of, <coughs> it's a little, it's different but seems similar at first. So there's enet mode that's different than enet role. So enet role is like who owns that particular actor. Enet mode is the mode your executable is currently running in. A dedicated server build, that will always be a dedicated server. If you're a client, it will be client. If you're doing no networking, it's going to be standalone. And if you are like a host hosting a server, you'll be a listed server. Um, I recommend it's easier to do development using listed servers because it's very easy in Unreal to just like open multiple clients. One of them will automatically be a listed server. Um, I would then recommend 
making all of your code assume that the dedicated server is a listen server or a dedicated server. And the way to do that is just to always switch on whether you're a client or not. So it's easier to just say, if you're a client, do this. If you're not a client, do, do something else. Uh, and that just makes it safe so you don't have to worry about dedicated servers versus listen servers, things like that. Um, um, because these are different. Um, the reason this is slightly different than the you know, Ethernet role um, is generally you're going to use this switch to determine whether you want something like a particle effect, things like that, to spawn. Because a dedicated server doesn't care about that at all, right? A dedicated server doesn't need a particle effect to spawn. It doesn't need like any kind of sound to play, things like that, because it's not hosting a person playing the game. So you can say, you know, pressure CPU cycles by just not spawning those things if you're a dedicated server. Um, next big thing, if you want to replicate an actor in Unreal, there's three pretty important booleans, and it should just work after that. Um, if you want it to replicate from the server to a client, you set the replicates to true. If you want movement to be replicated, which you don't necessarily always want to be replicated, you set that to true. Obviously, I'm like a character, things like that, you want that to be true. But on something that won't move, you don't need to set it to true, and you'll save a lot of bandwidth. Um, this is something, if you find that things are acting strange uh, with your actors, try setting be always relevant to true. Um, what Unreal does to save network bandwidth is if an object is too far away from the player, it just doesn't update it. Um, that saves a lot of bandwidth, but if you aren't careful, that means if you have like a big open area, something that's far away, you might be able to still see, but it'll just be sitting there not doing anything. Um, in a small scale game, it's probably fine to just make everything be always relevant. Um, in our game, we are, because everything is in one little arena. If you have a game that's larger, um, probably don't want that. So, do this bold and italicized and red, because if you don't spawn things, on the server, they don't show up anywhere else. So if you try to spawn something on a client, no one else sees it. So this is what I was talking about before, this is net relevancy. Um, there's another idea here, net priority. Lower priority uh, actors will not be updated in favor of higher priority actors if net, uh, if uh, always relevant is false. Um, so, I don't know. Say, take League of Legends or something, you would probably make all the champions higher priority, right? Than something like that. Um, but yeah, all this comes down to is saving data. Um, now, in terms of updating state of different actors, there's two important concepts there's RPCs and replicated properties. Um, RPCs, you basically call a function on the client, or you call a function in one executable, Unreal serializes that call sends it to another client or a server, it deserializes it, determines what function you wanted to call, and then calls that same function remotely. Um, they are less bandwidth intensive, um, very good for things you know, like events, because you're just doing like, hey, file this event, things like that. Um, they're a little bit more complicated to set up sometimes, and the logic is kind of weird. <coughs> Replicated properties, for example, you want health, Right, once that to be replicated, um, you mark them as replicated, and it just replicates. And it's really cool, um, but it uses a lot of bandwidth because every single frame, it's replicated for every single network update. So there's three types of remote procedure calls. There are server, client, and net multicast. Server, uh, contrary to the name, is actually a client sending the server a message. Um, very good example is you want to boost, something like that. So you say, server, please have my character boost. Um, a client RPC is the client telling a specific client something. Uh, what happens is it determines the client who owns the object or is calling the function on, uh, and it sends only that client to the RPC. Uh, an example is something like, Say you have energy on your character, and you don't need everybody else in the game to know about the energy. All you care about is the server and that specific client knowing about their energy so they can display it properly in like UI. You would have the server update that client with better energy. Uh, NetMic multicast 
The server calls it, it executes both on the server and all of the clients. Uh, and the last concept, all of these can be reliable or unreliable. An unreliable RPC can be dropped. Um, I would recommend things like trying to spawn particle effects, uh, other related things like that to be unreliable. Um, reliable calls will guarantee they will happen and they will happen in the order you call. Uh, but they require quite a bit more. So, server RPCs, this is a very common pattern for a server RPC. And it's really ugly, and it's annoying, but it's the best way to handle this. So, for example, so we have this on dash begin. Uh, we have that bound to our input component on our character. So that gets called by our input component when we press the dash button. So on the client, that's going to get called. It's going to come in here, and it's going to fail this role check because it does not have role authority. And it's going to call server on dash begin, uh, and that goes through the whole process of calling the function, replicating it to the server. The server gets it. Uh, important, important thing I forgot to mention, server RPCs must always be, mar be marked reliable and with validation, always, or the compiler would just call the LG or the LG um, So reliable. Validation is so that you can do validation on inputs and actions and disconnect players if they're cheating. Uh, so if you have this server on dash and begin validate function here, if you return false, the player that tried to call that function is going to be disconnected immediately. Um, in most cases, you'll probably just return true. <laughs> um, so as I said, this, this is a very common pattern. The client's going to call on dash begin. Um, that is actually a function that Unreal generates when you put the U function server reliable with validation here. Um, and then the implementation is the underscore implementation. So they have to be named exactly this. They have to be your function name, underscore validate, underscore implementation, or Unreal won't let you. Um, this is a common practice we use on our team. If it's a server RPC, we do server underscore client, client underscore multicast, we do multicast underscore. Um, yeah, so the idea is, we're going to call this on the server, so on the client, it'll call this. It'll come around, it's going to call here, it's going to return true on the server. And on the server, it'll call the implementation, which then just calls on dash begin again. But by the time you're here on the server, you are world 40, so it passes this check, and you can do any dash logic. Um, next thing, client RPCs, very similar. Um, client RPCs is optional to have validation or reliable on them. Uh, in fact, Validation is actually an error here. It doesn't actually do anything on the client RPC because you're sending it to a client. Um, they can't connect, deconnect themselves. Um, similar setup though, you need the function name and the function name underscore implementation. Uh, calling the function causes underscore implementation to be called on the target uh, client. So this is very useful for, like I said, updating, for example, energy here. The server's going to call client on energy change with a new value for energy. Uh, validate will be called. In this case, it isn't necessary to have that. And the implementation will be called here where we update the energy and we have a delegate that fires. Then we have net multicast. Uh, these are very useful for spawning things like particle effects. Because what you do, for example, is, for example, so we're talking about like, uh, dashing, right? The client is going to send an RPC to the server and say, I'd like to dash. The server is going to be like, okay, use some energy. They might send an RPC back. The client produces some energy. And then the server will probably also cause a net multicast event, which will mean that every client is going to have some like particle effects on to show that the person is dashing. Um, that's a very common way to do it because you generally, the less actors you replicate, the better. So you're not going to want to replicate like a particle effect actor in the scene. It's better to just send this net multicast and have everyone else simulate it locally because it's just part of the effects. So very similar, this is unreliable and reliable. And same thing, uh, multicast it. Um, everybody will run this code, including the server. So that's, that's important. So the next thing is replicated properties. And this is the simplest method. You override this function, get lifetime replicated properties. Um, and you mark what you want to replicate it as replicated. Um, and it has to be a property or a one Then when you implement to get lifetime replicated properties, you call super, you just call two rep lifetime, 
the class that this is in, and the thing that needs to be replicated. Uh, and that guarantees that that is always updated. Slightly more advanced, you can cause events to fire when something is changed when it's replicated. So in this case, we have this team variable that's being replicated. So instead of just doing replicated, we do replicated using, and you can put a function here. And that function also has to be a U function. So we have this. What that means is that this will be called every time team is changed on the client. Um, very important to note, an on rep function will not be called on the server. So it's common to, instead of making this a public function or a publicly accessible variable, you make it private, and you have a setter method that checks whether if you're on the server, it calls on rep team manually after you set this. Everybody else will have this called uh, automatically. Um, so in this case, we notice that whenever there is a team change, we update their team status in the game state um, and call this delegate. Um, a random side note, Unreal does not have a concept of teams built in, so you'll have to design the system yourselves. Now there's also conditional replication. Um, if you want to replicate something, only sometimes. So a common one is replicating something on only the initial update from the server. So for example, in this game state, if I connect to the game halfway through the match, I won't have scores of these two teams. Um, and the way we chose to update to save bandwidth for this uh, uh, for this variable, is we actually just send RPCs. So what happens is we chose the, the condition initial only, so the first time you join and the game state is replicated to you, you'll have the actual value of the team uh, of the scores at that period of time. After that, we decided it's more network friendly to simply send an RPC to update the scores after that. Um, and that's also pretty common. There's lots of conditions you can have, uh, replicating only to the owner of the object, skipping the owner, replicating to everyone else, um, sim uh, replicating only to things that are simulating physics, that's used in mostly their physics code. Um, and you can do custom things where you put in a function that returns true or false, whether you want it to replicate or not. And here's some of the most important classes with networking in Unreal. You have your game mode, your game state, your player controller, your character, your pawn, and your player state. And I'm going to go through these really quickly. So game mode defines the rules of your game. It's going to be things like, should your player currently take damage? Maybe it's pre-match, no one can take damage in pre-match. How long is the match? Uh, what are the game's winning conditions? Things like that. And the game mode exists only on the server. So if you call get off game mode on a client, it's going to return null. Um, and that's important for security reasons because that means only the server can determine whether the game ends, changes state, things like that. And it contains a reference to a game state and is generally in charge of updating things on the game state directly where nothing else really should change things in the game state. Um, and you call get off game mode on the world and that'll return something on the server and nothing everywhere else. And then there's game state. So the game state is replicated to everyone. And it's simple things like who's on what team, what is each team's score, things like that. And it's literally what it sounds like. It's the state of a match right now. Um, both of these have very simple state machines in them that have things like entering the map, pre-match, uh, currently playing, post-match, and leaving match. Um, and you can there are multiple functions in both of these that you can override to cause specific functionality to occur when those things change and like when you want them to change to the next state. Um, and you just call get game state, and that's how you get your game state. And that's going to exist everywhere. Um, be very careful, because the way RPCs work in the game, in Unreal, is it determines who to call the RPC on remotely by getting the owner of an object. And the owner of the game state is the game mode. So if you try to do RPCs in the game state, they may not work from a client to the server because the client's version of the game state has no owner because the owner is the game's game mode. Um, but it is safe to call RPCs from the server to clients. Um, so that's something you may want to do. Player controller uh, is the identity and 
kind of, yeah, it's basically the identity of players in the match. Um, when someone joins, one is created for that player on the, on the server and replicated back to that player only. No one else in the match has a copy of your player controller. Um, that's also for security reasons because the player controller is generally what you're using to control your player and you don't want someone else changing variables and things in that player controller. Um, so the server has a list of all of them. The client has a copy of only his or her own player controller. If you do split screen, there will be two, but they're both only the local ones. Um, as a reference to the player state and the controlled pawn or character, depending upon the kind of methodology you're using in your game, probably going to be a character. Um, so here's your character. It's literally your character. Everyone has a copy of it because they need to see you in game. It's the interface between your player state and your player controller. Um, and that's important because you don't necessarily want to put too much logic in your character for movement or control or state or anything like that. Because, for example, if you have a game where characters die, they'll probably destroy the character and then you'll lose all that state information uh, when you respond them. Uh, also came to reference to the player state. And lastly, when a player controller is created for a player, they're also given a player state. Um, this is where it's really recommended to put player stats, health, buffs, things like that. Um, it's what it's intended for. Uh, it's also persistent between uh, like, if your character dies, for example, if you remove them, the player state is still there, and then that reference will be reset when you spawn a new character for them. Um, so say your current health goes down to zero, you kill the character, you reset the health back to the max health, and when you spawn a character, you just continue referencing the health in the existing player state. Um, important thing to note, when you travel between maps in Unreal, 